Hey guys, welcome to motorrides.com. My name is Amit and right behind me I have the Tata Harrier which has been uh, highly anticipated, highly awaited and now we have driven this car for over uh, 250 kilometers and uh, we are going to talk about it without wasting much time. So the design uh, has been out for some time. Everybody knows that it looks smashing and although it doesn't look all that huge in the pictures, this car is actually bigger than the XUV 500. It's uh, longer, it's wider, even the wheelbase is longer. Although it's not as tall as the XUV 500, it definitely is the biggest car in its class, bigger than the Compass and with the Creta, you cannot even compare it. So it's not just good looking, it's very large, very imposing and very, very spacious, practical as well. Talking about the front of the car, uh, you'd see that uh, these very slim LED DRLs uh, are the highlight and they also have the blinkers integrated uh, while these are LEDs the blinkers are bulbs and they look very nice so when you turn the blinkers on you'd see this light turning into yellow which is very nice uh, these uh, headlamps are integrated in the bumpers and uh, these are projectors with the uh, xenons and you also have the normal halogen bulb with the reflector so the low beam is the projector while the high beam is the normal halogen the light is very very good and uh, we tested them in the night yesterday and the spread the intensity the visibility through these headlamps is actually very good and these are some of the best headlamps that you have in this class. This grille here is done in black and you also have this silver uh, finish at the bottom. Overall, the front looks very nice. The big strong bonnet with these two prominent creases make the Harrier look very, very strong uh, from the front. And while there may be some people who might not like uh, the whole concept of uh, putting the headlamps on the bumper, as a whole, it comes together very, very well. And when you look at the Harrier, uh, from the front, it really, really stands out. Now, coming towards the side, as I mentioned before, uh, it's the longest car in its class. It also has uh, the longest wheelbase. And uh, with those very taut, very tight lines, it looks very, very compact, very ready for action. It doesn't look like a bulbous, wallowy kind of an SUV. In fact, the way the suspension has been set up, it drives very well as well. So the way it looks, it drives in a very similar fashion as well. The ground clearance here is again class leading 205 mm of ground clearance, which makes it very action ready for going off the road as well. And complemented with the modes that you have inside, uh, it actually is one of the nicest cars in its class to uh, go for soft roading. The wheel arches here are uh, flared and uh, if you really look at it, there are two creases. There is this low crease and this crease on the top and uh, which really makes the front and the rear of the car look very muscular, very tight and taut. This very nice and straight shoulder line goes back. It's very fuss free, very nicely done. And it's only towards the rear where a few extra elements uh, come in. The roof here is a floating type uh, with this section done in black with a very small uh, quarter panel uh, as a window to let a very small amount of light in. You have this area finished in a satin chrome with Harrier branding. This uh, spoiler extends out and gives uh, a slightly sporty look to the car. The door handles uh, have this uh, chrome finish over them. The ORVMs are done in uh, two colors, uh, the body color and uh, black at the bottom. They have uh, mounted blinkers and they also have this light here, which projects uh, the Tata Harrier uh, sill out on the ground as a puddle lamp and it looks rather nice in the night. These ORVMs also are very nice, big and wide. So they give you a very good view of what's coming from behind. So very functional, very usable ORVMs. The wheels are 17 inches, 235 section, 235, 65 and uh, they are uh, Goodyear uh, Wranglers uh, which make it uh, reasonably good uh, for on as well as uh, off-road action. You, at the bottom you have this plastic cladding which underlines the fact that this car can do some off-road action as well. What also stands out is the fact that you have uh, that contrasting black colored uh, shark fin antenna there and it really looks very nice. The turn indicators at the rear are bulbs, uh, but the brake lights are LEDs and they look very nice and sharp. You also have these uh, fog lamps. You also have this high mount stop lamp, this wash and wipe, rear defogger. You have this camera here. You have uh, these uh, sensors. And uh, the rear also has uh, this uh, piano black finisher, which uh, creates some contrast, the Harrier lettering. and. Uh, this uh, effect of a Ford diffuser under which you can see the spare wheel peeking out. Now, if you had to open the boot, you'll have to use uh, this little button here under the Tata brand logo and it's an electromechanical unit. So it's pretty convenient. Although once you open it, 
to bring it down you have this handle so you'll have to bring it down to a certain level your where your hand is going to get stuck and then you'll have to push it down with another hand but once you open it you realize that uh, there is plenty of space inside there is uh, over 420 liters of boot space and the loading lip is also very flat so putting stuff in or taking it out is going to be very very easy so that's uh, a very nice feature so once you lift it you realize that there is more space underneath so what tata have done very cleverly is rather than having this space come across as a bay they have uh, put a tray over it and made it very flat but if you want to conceal something you still have some space and you have your jack also positioned right here also this is where you'd find uh, the subwoofer of the nine speaker fantastic sounding jbl unit you also have a light here and this huge parcel tray is of great help when you just want to pop something there like that Overall I really think that the Tata Harrier looks absolutely smashing and with its unique lighting up front and at the rear it can be spotted from a mile away and uh, I think for the majority of us uh, it is the pick of the lot when it comes to the visuals I think that the finish and uh, the quality of the paint could probably have been a little better we had very high expectations and uh, we found uh, the consistency of the paint and uh, the way the panels have been put together slightly inconsistent in a few places but we have been told by the tata officials uh, that uh, these are not the final production models these are very well finished prototypes and they're saying that the quality will go up when the cars hit the showrooms next month we really believe uh, what they're saying is correct and uh, the quality would actually go up i also believe that these alloy wheels could have been a little better they could have been uh, a better design although they are uh, reasonably good but they are not probably the best choice that uh, would have suited this design in a very appropriate manner let's get inside the car because there are as many wonders inside the car as well as there are on the outside but before we do that let's have a look at the key as well uh, you can unlock the car uh, using uh, this unlock button or you can just keep it in your pocket and uh, press this button and the doors will be unlocked you also have a boot unlock button on the key Once you get inside you'd be greeted by an all new interior so most of the parts in this cabin are all new and this probably is uh, the nicest cabin that Tata has ever made the steering wheel is new this uh, central touch screen the instrument console the dashboard the seats the door panels this whole cabin is entirely new and let's start with the steering wheel which by the way is rake and reach adjustable so that's a nice thing you also get a push start button which will bring this central instrument console to life and uh, this is not very fancy looking uh, tata have gone uh, minimal uh, with this one except for the fact that it has a digital tachometer on the left i think the readability of the tachometer could have been better uh, when you want to read the finer readings i think uh, the numbers are very very closely spaced and uh, if you want to figure out whether it's 1500 or 1800 it gets a little difficult uh, because the position is a little uh, dicey the speedo is uh, analog but the taco is digital and in the center you have the mid where you have all the readings so right now i'm looking at the power and uh, torque readout like uh, the baleno and the sias so this display shows you how much power and torque is being dished out you also get uh, distance to empty you get uh, instant fuel efficiency average fuel efficiency for two trips and a lot of other information which is important you have the engine temperature here and the door ajar warning at the bottom So it's a very nice display it has all the useful information apart from that you also have this new 8.8 inch touch screen unit which is android auto as well as uh, apple carplay compliant very very responsive to touch very high resolution so a good job there it looks very nice as a whole along with these uh, louvers so a good job there by tata it really stands out and uh, makes the car look very very premium you also have voice commands and uh, you have uh, this little feature here which lets you know how well you're driving in terms of the fuel efficiency and safety and uh, everything is very self explanatory it's uh, not very difficult to understand uh, you can connect it with bluetooth uh, you have usb uh, connectivity as well but the more important thing here is that the audio output here is uh, provided by jbl through an over uh, 300 rms watt output system with nine speakers so i showed you Uh, the subwoofer at the rear apart from that you have uh, four speakers and four tweeters so nine speakers in all and the system really sounds very well even at the top of the volume it doesn't feel distorted so audio files are really going to love it uh, the audio system has really really very well done and tata have continued with their legacy of creating some of the nicest audio systems in their class and above here you have the buttons for uh, the ac 
you have uh, these buttons for the front and rear uh, fog lamps you have three economy drive mode activated driving modes uh, to select from four drive mode activated city drive mode activated so as you would have heard uh, there is city there is echo and uh, there is uh, the sport mode and these basically are derived from the engine mapping so echo uh, will have better fuel efficiency city is for general use and sport will have uh, more performance uh, and it's very perceptible uh, you would also be able to extend uh, the fuel efficiency if you use the eco mode so this is very very nice apart from that one highlight of this car is its electronic stability program which is very very advanced and uh, it comes with these modes as well so you have wet mode you have a rough mode so the esp uh, controls the response to the throttle as well as uh, the braking on individual wheels to make sure that the car responds to the rough terrain or slippery conditions uh, whatever it is and you can choose these modes and they really work and uh, for a two wheel drive car uh, these modes work reasonably well and are a very good useful practical functional inclusion and they are not there only for the gimmicks you also have the hill descent control button here and uh, the car uh, will travel down at a speed of 8 km per hour when you engage it if you really look at the steering wheel you'd see that uh, there are a lot of buttons here and while it may look uh, intimidating uh, at first it's very simple tata have done a good job with that so you have cruise control here and you can set it uh, using this toggle here and uh, you can cycle through the various screens using these two buttons and you can reset things uh, using this central button apart from that you have the telephony voice command uh, buttons here uh, you can choose the source and then you can increase or decrease the volume and uh, change stations or change track using this button here so a very nice steering it's very nice to hold as well it's not as big as you'd find it uh, to be on a few other uh, bigger cars so i quite liked it for its size and the leather finish also feels uh, nice to the hand you also have automatic uh, headlamps and in addition you also get automatic climate control so the temperature cannot be seen here but the display can be seen here on the main screen let me just show you how uh, the rear view camera looks it's uh, not the most high res displays that we have seen in terms of the resolution but it gives you a good view of what's happening behind and uh, i think uh, that the resolution of the camera by itself could have been better the screen is good but the camera's resolution could have been a little better it also has the guidelines so which is a good thing you obviously have the parking sensors as well and you can engage or disengage them now talking about the storage and utility spaces you have this big space here for a 1 liter bottle uh, you have an umbrella holder here and then you have some space here as well you have space for a couple of cell phones here two cup holders you can also uh, put a big bottle here a 1 liter bottle will fit here and you have this armrest with this uh, compartment where you can put your wallet uh, it can also accommodate a reasonably sized cell phone it's chilled so if you have a couple of cans which you want to keep cool for the next couple of hours it's going to work very well you have a 12 volt power socket and this armrest by itself uh, really aids comfort over uh, longer journeys but the one thing that i don't like is the fact that the usb socket is hidden from uh, and the idea that tata had was that they did not want to show these open slots uh, so that the interior looked very nice and classy and uh, without uh, any uh, open holes but it becomes a bit of a problem to find that socket and uh, ergonomically this is not something which is a very good move so you have a usb uh, socket here and you have an auxin but to get there you really have to bend down and uh, figure out where they exactly are and that's not a very good thing to have one big omission here is the tire pressure monitoring system which is available on the xuv 500 and we think that tata would have done well by providing that feature in the harrier as well in addition you have uh, the sunglasses holder here you have uh, uh, this light and you have this uh, little uh, space here which i think has been left blank uh, to make way for the buttons for a sunroof that may be coming in the future variants if you look at the dash it's uh, finished in a very soft to touch uh, material it's very nice to touch and uh, feels very premium you also have this flat surface here where you can probably put an idle the central part is done in this uh, dark brown oak wood finish this is obviously for wood this is not wood and uh, at the bottom you have this satin gray finish the ac vents are done in uh, piano black and uh, this satin chrome but the one problem that i have with this whole setup is that uh, this is not the nicest finished cabins that i've seen in this class and there are some uh, rough edges that i'm not very fond of there are some sharp edges here and there 
and uh, where parts meet other parts where things come together you can see that uh, there are traces uh, of the things having been put together for example you can see uh, that there is uh, this white line between uh, the chrome and uh, the piano black which seems like a bit of a glue and it's inconsistent so there are uh, some sharp edges even the plastics here are not of the best quality that i've seen so this is uh, a bit of uh, a letdown for me uh, although the features uh, and everything else is fantastic some of the plastics and the way everything is put together is not the best that i have seen especially in this class now talking about the seat the seat by itself is very nice and comfortable uh, it's very well bolstered so gives you very good support the driver side seat also gets uh, lumbar support which would enhance comfort over the longer journeys uh, for my frame it feels just right but it's just about trying to squeeze me a little bit so if you're a bigger frame than me then you'd probably feel that uh, uh, you're spilling slightly out of the seat although for me this seat works perfectly well what i also like is uh, how the headrest just tucks in and uh, gives it a very premium look so when it goes down fully it uh, looks like an integrated headrest but it's actually adjustable and it looks very nice talking of the seat and the ergonomics still uh, i think uh, the one problem that i have is that my left knee keeps fouling with this part of the well the footwell and uh, the dash keeps fouling with my knee and this is a problem that quite a few of my fellow journalists uh, also talked about so over longer journeys this can be a bit of an issue uh, for uh, uh, the taller people also an omission is that none of the windows are auto down so you really have to hold all the window buttons even the driver's uh, window button and uh, this uh, should have been addressed the mirrors are electrically adjustable and they are uh, power folding as well so that's a nice feature also from the driver's perspective the vision is very good you sit uh, reasonably high so you have a very good view of things around you the lines of the bonnet uh, make you feel as though you are sitting in something very strong and sturdily built so the visibility is very very good and uh, as such there are no blind spots uh, so in that sense tata have done a very good job i think in terms of features in terms of the sound quality in terms of everything else uh, tata have done a very good job especially if you look at uh, this uh, variant where you have uh this fall leather with the uh, this perforated spine and uh, these uh, perforated fall leather inserts on the door handles as well as these places so it looks very nice and uh, feels nice to touch as well but uh, the only problem is that uh, it's not as well finished the finesse is slightly missing uh, and uh, that's my only complaint before i move to the rear seat uh, let me show you the glove compartment as well and uh, it's reasonably sized but the cool feature here is this tray where you can put your uh, wallet or your cell phone and uh, it's always nice to have a tray which is very easily accessible rather than uh, trying to find stuff in a sea of other things in the glove box compartment itself i would also like to mention uh, this handbrake here so there is a button underneath and you have to press it to engage it and then press it again to bring it down and uh, it works reasonably well there is no problem it's a, a fancy design uh, but how uh, the slot for the movement of this brake has been cut out looks uh, slightly unfinished to me and it probably could have been done a little better now let's move to the second row and see how the state of affairs is there now as you can see i'm very comfortable here there is just ample knee room here no problem whatsoever good space to move around my feet as well so a very comfortable seat i spent about uh, 45 minutes here uh, yesterday and i was very comfortable the under thigh support uh, also is very good it's one of the nicest seats in terms of the under thigh support as well and uh, overall with the headroom with its uh, width with these big windows you really feel nice and comfortable in these seats i really am all praise for tata for having uh, created this beautiful second row of seats and i think this is going to be a big selling point uh, of this car this is one of the highlights of this car it's very comfortable very spacious and you also have this central armrest with twin cup holders and there is space for three people to sit abreast there is a bit of a protrusion here there is uh, this hump but i think it would not be very difficult for people to put their legs uh, on the two sides and sit here in the second row for uh, medium journeys there is no central adjustable headrest though and i think tata could probably have done well by providing a headrest here you have the space uh, for putting your cell phone or wallet and you have a usb socket again here which is uh, positioned 
in a rather odd way the idea again was to hide it from the direct view so that it looks clean but the ergonomics uh, have been affected looking at the door panels you would see that uh, you have space for a big bottle here some space here but the good part is that tata have uh, provided this additional space where you can put a wallet or whatever you want to put so this uh, additional space provides you a tray kind of a structure to put uh, the small objects like a key or a cell phone you also get uh, these reading lights for the second row passengers although the build quality of some of the parts uh, like this here is suspect it's already moving quite a bit and uh, it's almost about to come off you also have uh, uh, this uh, handle and uh, a coat hook again uh, there is a bit of a rough edge here so that's the thing that i'm talking about although the seat is very comfortable there are a lot of features if you look at it it looks very nice and rich but there are some rough edges uh, the quality of the plastics and uh, i think the finish the finesse uh, on the car could probably have been a little better being seated in the second row of seats i would also want to talk about the fact that you have the ac vents placed in the b pillars and uh, you can turn them left to right for the orientation and you can turn them up and down to control the flow so if you uh, push this uh, uh, lower uh, up it's going to shut and if you press it down it's going to allow the air to come out the flow is not very strong uh, and although it's not very hot here in uh, uh, jodhpur right now the temperatures are quite low but i think that the flow should definitely have been stronger we used it yesterday and it takes a little bit of time uh, for the cabin uh, to start chilling especially at the rear also i wanted to mention the comfort uh, from a ride quality perspective so i was sitting in this seat uh, yesterday for like half an hour 45 minutes and the suspension on this car despite having been uh, tuned on the firmer side it's been very well damped and the car doesn't uh, wallow around like uh, it does in a few other cars so it's a very comfortable seat if you're going to uh, go over longer journeys uh, it makes it very firm very stable very planted very settled so there is very little movement and uh, you actually feel very comfortable uh, very nice in these seats and uh, despite being firm from medium to high speeds these seats make you feel very nice only at very slow speeds uh, where there are rough surfaces you feel a bit of a vertical movement but apart from that you feel very nice uh, and comfortable uh, in the rear seats from a suspension perspective as well so we are behind the wheel of the much awaited tata harrier and uh, it's powered by a 2 liter diesel and uh, this is the same uh, unit which powers the jeep compass as well but in a different state of tune it's uh, manufactured at uh, uh, the same facility where the jeep compass engine comes from and uh, while the power is down on the compass it uh, produces 170 hp and 315 newton meters of torque this is uh, 138 uh, hp or about 140 ps and the same amount of torque 315 newton meters so what has changed uh, and uh, why exactly have tata chosen this uh, unit over uh, the more powerful unit well i really believe that uh, unit on uh, the compass has a big turbo lag and on this unit that turbo lag has almost been entirely eliminated there is hardly any turbo lag here and this car actually starts uh, uh, responding to throttle inputs from as low as 1000 rpm so very very tractable engine if you're going to use it in the city you can use it in higher gears uh, at low revs without any problem really the power builds up properly after about 1800 or 1900 rpm but there is uh, no dearth of the pulling power or torque from the engine so you don't feel uh, that very pronounced turbo lag or uh, the turbo kicking in uh, per se so in that sense uh, very linear engine and uh, that's uh, always a big plus so tons of torque available right from the bottom of the rev range and uh, overtaking is very easy i tested this car for in gear speeds also and uh, in the first year uh, it reaches 40 km per hour in the second year 80 km per hour third gear takes it uh, to 120 km per hour and in fourth gear it would uh, reach 170 km per hour so the gearing is uh, reasonably uh, well spaced out the fifth and the sixth gears are relatively taller but uh, that tells me that this car is actually going to 
breach the 200 kilometers uh, per hour mark uh, if you find a long enough stretch fantastic cruiser uh, i tested it for its uh, cruising capabilities as well and in sixth gear 100 kilometers per hour was being done at about 1700 1800 rpm sub 2000 revs and it was cruising very happily uh, in fifth gear uh, 100 comes at uh, about 2200 rpm fourth gear uh, 2800 rpm so all of those are still very uh, low revs uh, to reach the ton and that really makes it a very very nice cruising machine if you're going to be uh, driving it all day long and it can really munch miles but what's more important is that with that very linear engine lesser power and that tractability uh, that cruising uh, efficiency the fuel efficiency on this car is actually very good area efficiency has not been declared yet by tata but uh, we tested it and uh, in the city this is going to deliver about 12 to 13 kilometers to the liter and uh, the highest fuel efficiency that you can get is about 18 to 19 kilometers to the liter if you're driving on a highway like this uh, at cruising speeds so that's that but the one thing that's not very nice about uh, this engine is the noise after you cross two and a half thousand rpm the engine does get a little gruff and noisy and uh, that's not very nice the cabin is not very well insulated from the engine noise and that uh, should have been the case the engine by itself should have been a little bit more refined and uh, that's something that's one of the negatives of this engine uh, it's also not a very rev happy kind of an engine and, and shows some reluctance to uh, go above uh, three and a half thousand rpm where it actually becomes very uh, noisy as well as i mentioned it revs all the way to 5000 uh, rpm the performance is strong till uh, say and a half 4000 rpm after which it uh, flattens out and it takes some time for the needle to climb up but overall i, I really think that uh, this diesel is very capable very usable very practical very functional and uh, the fact that it's very fuel efficient also makes it very very usable mated to six speed transmission manual as you know there is no automatic but for all practical purposes i think this engine transmission combo works very very well just that the refinement and the noise levels should have been uh, lower the gear shifts also are very good very slightly notchy but not complaint worthy at all there is no rubberiness it uh, shifts very nicely very reassuring so uh, i quite like the way it shifts so good engine transmission combo insulation is a bit of an issue road noise wind noise tire noise we are driving on a near perfect surface right now but still some of uh, the road noise, uh, the engine noise uh, is filtering in. Wind noise starts coming in after uh, about 100 kilometers per hour. So all of that probably could have been a little better. The steering is actually uh, quite active even at dead center. So uh, that's a nice thing. Uh, it reacts very well to inputs around corners. It uh, feels very alive, although it's a little too responsive, I think. Uh, uh, once you turn it a little more than slightly off the center but it's a lot better than a lot of other steerings could have been a little bit uh, heavier although it, it does respond but uh, as i mentioned it's a little too responsive so sometimes it feels a little artificial but uh, with a little bit more weight i would have really loved the steering in any case i think uh, it's small size and the weight fits into the hand and the weight reacts to the inputs it's one of the nicest steering wheels uh, just that the weight probably could have been a little better in terms of handling uh, the suspension has been tuned on the firmer side it's firm but very very well damped so the car rides flat over any surfaces maintains its composure brilliantly the the poise of this car is fantastic and uh, even on rough surfaces if you're uh, driving at medium to high speeds it manages its composure very very well it rides very flat even around corners with that uh, firm setup feels very nice isn't wobbly for those of you who like driving, this car is going to come as a surprise from a Tata. Very, very driver friendly and uh, for enthusiasts, this actually is going to appeal a lot, uh, especially for the SUV segment. So from a handling and ride perspective, I think Tata have done a very good job and uh, uh, around corners and uh, even on highways uh, at high speeds, the braking, the stability of this car is fantastic, very, very commendable and we really think that it also is the testimony to the fact that it shares its uh, lineage with the Discovery Sport. So overall a fantastic practical package and uh, very very well done and apart from the noise and uh, the insulation I don't have any problems with the ride handling engine and transmission of this car. Now the prices of this car have not been announced although we hear that it's going to be priced from 16 to 21 lakh rupees on the road not ex showroom 
and we are not going to talk about uh, rumors and what the price could be but uh, i think this car is uh, going to have the xuv 500 and the jeep compass uh, as its primary rivals uh, although the creta is not comparable in terms of the size but in terms of the pricing that car can also be a bit of a rival for this car so rather than comparing this car to those cars in terms of prices let's talk about what are the high points and low points in terms of the looks this car absolutely outdoes everything that is there as competition in terms of space in terms of comfort uh, the way it drives is uh, fantastic the fuel efficiency for this size of an engine is very good the tractability the drivability all the features that you have the audio system the infotainment system the central touch screen uh, i think this car is loaded and uh, for the price uh, the stuff that you get here is absolutely fantastic my grouse is only with the little details the finish the finesse and i think uh, if that part was covered a little bit better this car would have been an absolute scorcher nonetheless i think tata have done a fantastic job uh, and uh, apart from a few things which i mentioned uh, in terms of the finish and uh, in terms of uh, the build in certain areas i think as a product this car really really shines uh, you'll have to wait for the prices to be announced to uh, have our final verdict and uh, we are going to write our verdict in the description as soon as the prices are announced thanks a lot for watching uh, this was amit changani i really hope that this video was useful to you if you liked it hit the like button subscribe to motroids uh, and until next time rev hard rev free and drive safe